more on China's trade surplus reaching an 18-month high. We bring in Carl Weinberg. He is an economist and the founder of High Frequency Economics. Carl, glad to have you with us this morning. So Chinese exports rose to a record high. Import gains slowed. To what extent did these data force the Chinese government's hand to allow appreciation of the yuan? Hi, Deidre. Good morning. Well, you know, which should bring China under a little bit more pressure, uh, particularly from the United States, uh, where the surplus uh, is quite large. It's not quite a record, but it's getting there. Uh, however, Europeans are still seeing their trade surplus a little bit on the diminished side. Uh, having said all of that, the Chinese this morning set the reference rate for the yuan actually lower rather than higher against the U.S. dollar. So clearly they don't feel the pressure. They, yeah, they almost uh, don't care at all, it would seem, based on that one decision. But do you think that these data signal a diminished contribution from China to the global economy or indicate any kind of slowing in China? Uh, no, I don't think so, Deirdre. We've got the biggest month for exports ever. We've got uh, the third biggest month for imports ever. The foreign sector in gross terms is just continuing to expand. That means they're creating jobs in China as a result of their foreign transactions. It's a good thing for them. But, Carl, I mean, what about the fact that the import data did show slow? And it's still relatively high, but it did show slowing. Well, you know, the slowing went from $117 billion to $116 billion. It was a relatively small slowing. Exports are still up 38 percent. I'm sorry, 20, imports are still up 23 percent year over year, and that's a, a pretty strong gain. The slowdown in the year over year rate of import growth reflects more of last year's volatility in imports rather than what's happening right now. We also got some data on property prices in China, slowest pace in six months in July. There have been a lot of big voices out there, Carl, saying that the Chinese housing market is going to feel a boom or go through a bust cycle. How much of a threat do you think that is to the Chinese growth engine? Well, the Chinese are concerned about their property market somewhat, but we have to remember that housing doesn't play the same role in China's economy as it does in ours. We certainly don't have the Chinese financial system pegged to the health of the housing market as it was in the developed market economies. Uh, we also know that housing is a much smaller part of individual wealth. Most people don't own houses. So while a bubble in housing is, is a source of concern to any economy, I don't see this as being a deal breaker for China's economic engine. It will continue to chug along, and uh, I don't think that they're particularly concerned about it either. All right, although you did have the government come out last week, Carl, and say, ask the banks, instead of factoring in a 30 percent correction for the property market, factor in a 60 percent, a, a double. You don't think that says something? Well, what it says, I think, is that they're responding to our concerns. If people in the West are worried about China's banks' uh, vulnerability to the property market, what better way to assuage them than to build in an even bigger uh, drop in property prices into your stress testing. You know, I think they're just showing us that, in fact, uh, the fears of Western analysts that property prices are going to crash and bring the economy down are misplaced. So you say it's pretty good PR. All right, Carl. Thanks very much, Carl Weinberg. Joining us there, he is the chief economist and founder of High Frequency Economics.